film some cars. And I want to give you guys five awesome, fantastic, must-know tips about filming or photographing cars. In a world where nuclear war has begun, vampires fought back in super real 3D. The majority of cars that I've filmed has been for Trans Am Worldwide, but I've filmed some other vehicles as well in other videos. Filming vehicles, this is just something that you're going to run into. Whether you're filming or photographing, these five tips really do apply. So let's just get to it. Tip number one, the paint job matters. The color of the vehicle matters. So what you're really dealing with is a mirror. And the darker that that color is, the more it's going to reflect. The easiest color to deal with on a paint job is usually like a light sky blue or silver. The light just kind of diffuses across it the easiest. The darker that the vehicle is, the more it's going to reflect, the more that environment's going to matter in a 360 degree direction. So that's important. That might really change where you choose to put the vehicle. So if a room only looks good on one side and you're filming a black car that's like a mirror, if there's a really high intensity other color thing happening on the other side of the room, that's going to reflect into the vehicle. So I think in particular with a with a dark paint job, you want to try and put it in an environment that's cool almost the whole way around, which is not easy. And again, this is why I say black cars are the hardest to deal with, which is the majority of the freaking cars that I end up filming uh, because everyone loves the black bandit edition color scheme on the Trans Am that's kind of the iconic black with the gold bird. I'm stuck filming black cars the majority of the time. When you point a light at it, the black kind of like just absorbs the light. You, a lot of times what you end up with is just a hot spot when you point a light right at a black car in particular. You put the light on there, the closer you get that light, the bigger the hot spot's gonna be. The further away you get that light, the smaller the hot spot's gonna be. So you get that light further away, but now the car is not really lit enough. So how do you get around that? What do you do? Tip number two is light the environment around the vehicle. Because that vehicle is a mirror, it's going to basically light up the car. It's going to reflect back all the light that's around it a bit. Try and light the environment as much as you can, but in a cool cinematic way. You don't want to just turn on a ceiling light. Tip number three, use longer lenses more. When you get really close on a vehicle with a wide lens, which can be a neat feel, your reflection is going to appear in it like right away. If you want a tight shot, like a close shot of some feature of the vehicle, or you just want to get that vehicle to fill up the whole frame, then get further back and use a longer lens. And the longer you go in, the more it compresses and makes that object bigger and fill up more of the frame. But you're out of the way of being a reflection in that vehicle, which is a nightmare to deal with when it's video, way more so than dealing with it in photography because as it moves you're gonna to have to get into motion tracking and all that stuff and it's a total pain when you use a wide shot use it more so for getting the environment and you can get in there and get a wide shot but you're just gonna be really if you want to get right up on it but you're gonna to have to be so selective with your angle of how you shoot it it's gonna be completely based on just trying to avoid a reflection rather than picking the exact angle that you want for that aesthetic that you're going for tip number four use a polarizer have a polarizer with you if you don't know what a polarizer is you put that on the front of your lens and it's going to allow you to basically choose you rotate it and it will change the way that you're seeing highlights and it'll change the way that you're seeing reflections plus it's going to make your colors a lot more rich if you're going outside you're going on a trip with these vehicles and you're trying to film them through the day 
you're gonna be there midday. I mean, it's nice to get the golden hour, but I never shoot a car for just one hour. I mean, I'm, I'm shooting for, you know, multiple hours, oftentimes the whole day, and a big chunk of that, the biggest chunk, is gonna be during right in the middle of the day. Sometimes you have to get a couple for the different size lenses. You can get step-down rings, get a bigger polarizer, get a step-down ring that goes on it, then you can screw it onto a smaller lens. I hate changing filters out on lenses and stuff. It's kind of annoying to deal with, but realistically, it's the only tool that you can have in your arsenal that's going to help you have an option to deal with reflections that are happening on the vehicle whenever you're in a shot that you just know that you want to get this exact angle and everything seems perfect except for this massive reflection that's happening on top of in my case it'll happen a lot on the hood of the trans am uh which sucks because there's a huge bird painted on it and that's a that's like the trans am thing that's on it so i i have to show that and if it's blown out and everything else looks great i could take that polarizer and twist it and then kind of alleviate that some another quick tip is is that in premiere you can actually trace that out and bring down just the highlights of it but i'll go over that color grading tutorial that later you can follow me on that tip number five use a higher aperture rather than trying to go for the extreme shallow depth of field all the time with a 1.4 or 1.8 or even a 2.8 can can sometimes be too much don't feel like you have to live there a lot of starting photographers and videographers just live completely on that aperture setting as much as possible to get every ND filter they can put on there so they can keep that shallow depth of field going but with a vehicle or the car unless it's sideways then um, it's a very long thing so even if it's parked at a 45 degree angle realistically that's that can be on an extreme shallow depth of field at a, at a low aperture the front of the car is going to be in focus the back of it's going to be out of focus and that can look okay um it definitely can look okay especially if you're like trying to get in for a specific part of the vehicle which is different but i'm talking about filming the vehicle as a whole the majority of shots that you're going to do you're going to want the whole vehicle to be in focus so if you want the whole vehicle to be in focus you're going to have to use a higher aperture so i would be you know rocking somewhere between 8 to 12 like an f 8 to 12 and be outside during the middle of the day and then everything's going to be in focus you're going to have a full depth of field the background hopefully you're taking the vehicle out to an awesome backgrounds you, you'll want that full depth of field at that point and what I mean by shallow depth of field and full depth of field is shallow depth of field makes everything behind the object kind of more like a blur and, and pulls the object out to the front which is great but full depth of field is going to let allow you to see everything that's in the environment behind whatever the subject is and that is a more to be honest I see that being executed a lot more and more mature um, cinematographers and photographers it's like everyone's kind of more scared to go there because they're it's like you've waited so long to have an awesome shallow depth of field option when you got a real camera and real lenses to be able to do that and you paid so much money for this lens that can now do that and be super fast um so i think too many people live there myself included i'm guilty of it they go for the most extreme shallow depth of field that they can achieve all the time all their shots and as cinematic as that is when all your shots are that way it just starts to detract from how special that is it doesn't make things pop anymore because it's all the same and when you just make it a full depth of field you're going to allow yourself to pull better focus especially if you're doing moving car shots and the whole car can actually be in focus at one time which can be pretty important uh, for the product it looks kind of weird to constantly have half of the car out of focus just because you want that shallow depth of field so that is tip number five don't be afraid to live in a higher aperture f 8 to 12 i mean many people go past that for some reason i have a hard time going past 12 um, there's guys that rocked 16. I don't know. It's almost too flat for me. So those are the five massive tips that I wish somebody had told me before I went out and filmed these cars. I hope that you found value in that. If you did, by all means, guys, I am just starting this channel up this year over the past couple of months, and I would love to get some subscribers. I've had the channel for a lot of years, but it's only been for my actual client videos to showcase work that I've done. And now I'm doing weekly episodes with these tutorials and going out on productions. I've got a lot of fun stuff. And I'm love to take you along for the ride. I do all different types of projects from music videos to car commercials to weddings to other live events to documentary work and I do get to travel around as you can see in some of the videos I made it out to Vegas and New York and North Carolina just for some of the stuff with Trans Am alone. So anyway guys take care and I'll catch you on the flip side.